<laughs> Microphone problems. Hey, one, two, three. Good morning, my name is Stephen North, and I'm the founder of Heart Occupation Music, which has taken over about 20 years of research into changing my own life, and that's where it all originated from. So um, I'm here to tell the journey, and then we'll talk about a little bit more about it, and then we can have an experience of the music with what I work with the crystal. So, as a child, I was diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, um, back in a time when it was considered to be a parenting disorder. Well, that's what they said. But and then when we're moving into the teenage years, apparently it was uh, cured. So, going through high school, I kind of breezed. I was like the isolated child, and no one really knew me. Um, but then. In around the 90s, when I started trying to figure out what I wanted to do with life, and I had a, I loved programming, I loved electronics, because that's what I was doing when I was in the theater classes, etc., etc. I wanted to look at um, what I could do, because I really had no job, I was working as a waiter, and you know, life wasn't, what it, wasn't exciting, so I started studying electronic engineering, but because I wasn't able to study so well, like when I was writing, like reading notes, I wrote the entire book, I went back and tried to get onto the uh, ADD again because somehow I had this belief system that I couldn't do anything without, you know, the help of medication. So I tried that for another semester, and unfortunately, it was too much for me because the brain was just too much. Uh, with the like the dexamphetamines I was taking was just too much for me. Moved into um, to, to help me get through a, a few government roles, and I've always. And then I went on and studied like electronic engineering, I studied computer programming, and for some reason I'm nervous, but anyway. Um, and that still kept moving forward. So um, I always had a fascination about how dark information flows, such as databases, financial systems, and that's how I managed to excel through my positions, such as fleet management, insurance management, property management, financial management. I ended up in 2013 being the senior financial analyst for Environmental Protection Authority without any qualifications in accounting. So it was always about how data flowed and having the ability to program with Excel sheets and database systems and migrating into other systems. So this is where all this whole systems ex um, expertise comes from. So during this period, around 2003, I started researching more because it's like, it had to just be more than taking six pills a day. I kept questioning and spoke to many specialists and we started looking at nuclear isotope imaging study of the brain, how the blood flows, and then we started trying to chemicals. But, you know, the, the whole uh, diet was pills and pills and pills. And for some reason, I just kept getting negative and getting depressed and upset that my marriage started to break down because it was just too much for, it actually really was too much for the both of us. I think I remember at one stage going, if this is what life is, I didn't really want to be a part of it because it was just too much because it was like taking dexamphetamine, Ritalin, Lithium, Risperdale, and Effexor, and all these others. And it ended up leaving me in Royal Perth Hospital with an overdose at one time. So around 2010, I decided to jump off, and um, after the marriage fell apart, we left us uh, separated ways, I decided to grab a one-way flight and go to Italy and meet a friend. And this happens to be the, one of the most life-changing experiences that I've had. Because in 2010, when I'm sitting in Italy, and it was interesting because I told the person last night about what I've been talking about, is that we were about to go to a visa because somehow this person managed to reignite a childhood dream of wanting to be a DJ. I used to do it when I was 17, 18, doing weddings and parties, and I just really enjoyed it. 
there was something about music that I really needed to love. Um, so we had our flight book, we had the hotel book, and then the day before I went off to Holland and I never went. So I went, okay, decision made. If I'm going to go back, I have to be paid. So I just asked. Yeah. Whoa. So I took a year off and um, started focusing on music production because in order to be a DJ in you know, these big party hours, you had to produce music. So I uh, started training myself because everything I've done, I've trained myself. And I started looking at how, to, how music works, how the frequencies, how um, uh, chord progression works, and really started throwing myself into it, meeting people. I became a journalist. I ended up holding about five different radio shows around the world on doing like house music and stuff like that. And around 2012, 13, when I went, okay, I need to get a job. I started working as a financial analyst. And I needed, and I started wanting to do more, wanting to do more. But around 30th of June 2014, the, the agency had a $4 million budget cut and all that contract positions ended. So we also had a 12 month government recruitment freeze. So the uh, temp agency said, we can't get you a job. So I started applying for jobs everywhere else, everywhere else, couldn't get a job, couldn't get a job. This is at the time when I lost a friendship, very was very close to me, depression and grief started settling, settling, settling in. So, then the financial situation started coming because the bank account went dry. The bank was saying, right, you need to pay us the arrears, we're going to take possession. All this stuff was going on, losing the home, losing everything. At one stage it was done for DUI and it was like, okay, what's going on? So around April 2015, a friend of mine who I didn't know at the time introduced me to a spirit guy called Amy. And we started talking a little bit more about how that connection works and how the music works. Through this whole journey, I didn't understand how crystals work. It was only introduced to that in 2014, and this when a spirit guide turns around and goes, you're gonna figure out how to transfer the crystal frequencies into sound. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, I'm really just switched off, I don't know what you're talking about, this is crazy stuff. But what I started realizing is that the crystals that we use are like an electronic circuit, that the frequencies are all part of the digital electronics using the oscilloscope to measure frequencies. And then I started researching and you know, speaking with the scientists at the museum, going, how do we do this, how do we do this, how do we do this? I didn't understand, so I was trying to figure it out. I started looking at brainwave entrainment because during the drug therapy regime, I wanted, you know, it just really started looking at how can we change the brain. Because during this really deep depression period, I really wanted to transform it. I had enough, you know, like when the police are saying, why did you drink so much? It's like, hey, I didn't want to be here. So life really had to change. So then, with the connection with the spirit guide, I realized we really started working into it. And one of the biggest things that Amy taught me was how to work with emotions, because what I was doing was using coping mechanisms to really change the way I actually know. When we were getting all emotional, I didn't know how to deal with it. So I started drinking or substance abuse or whatever it is and didn't really know how to work with the frequency. What she started teaching me was that emotions are really a life frequency. They're just there to teach us something, like a child throwing a temper tantrum. They're there to teach us something about ourselves. And then I started going, if everything is all these light frequencies, can we recode those frequencies to change our experiences? So what we started doing then is started exploring, and I started playing with crystals, because crystals are a source of light, and started coding these crystals. What I realized I was doing was that we were starting to recode the space around the heart, because in life, with all these traumatic experiences and bad breakups and relationships, we really close our heart space down. And this is where we start getting into this, and as well as the you know, ingrained negative belief systems such as you're not good enough, you won't amount to anything. It was really a troubling experience. So then I started trying this on myself around 2015 using the music. I didn't believe it would work. I tried something, put the headphones on, and it worked. I couldn't believe it. My entire body lit up. And I went, okay, so I threw myself more and more into this, looking at different crystal frequencies, going, okay, these crystals are doing these healing benefits, such as rose quartz heals the heart space, binary frequency of 136.1 hertz works on the heart space. Let's put it all together. So then I started realizing that when I'm writing this music, and I didn't know at the time, was that I went back on channeling Amy, who sounded, put, you know, put this on here, that's going to stop the brain, put this down here, that's going to do this, but that's, that's there, it's going to do that. So when we're walking through a town hall, uh, the gong goes off and everyone's, everyone's conversation stops because the mind's getting distracted. So what we're realizing is that once we start working with our consciousness, we can really change our experiences. So the more and more I went into this and started doing group sessions, the more and more I changed myself where I'm able to bring in more happiness and more love for self. 
and really change those negative belief systems about myself. And so what we've come through now with the music is that when I started channeling all the codes, we're able to recreate our consciousness and break away from these negative belief systems. And it really has been, for me, a life-changing experience and has helped many different people. Um, now what we're going to do, I'll tell a little bit more later on, as actually what we're doing with this work now, and I'll introduce you to the song which is called Love for the Earth, um, which is going to come on a new album very, very soon. So um, what I want you to do is, uh, like me, take a few deep breaths, just relax, and enjoy what we're going to do, because once we start, I'm going to pretty much activate these crystals and it's going to go through the speakers and the music, so you're going to, you may feel something. So brace yourself.
Now let's talk about the cool stuff. What we've just experienced is the very first natural scalar frequencies embedded in audio. What we are doing is scalar frequencies are actually currently made using two Tesla coils, which was created by Nikola Tesla. What we have done here, using from the energy that I'm channeling into the canvas of crystals, we're using um, the scalar energies to recode our consciousness. What we have done is we call it activation, very specifically because we're activating your bioenergy fields. Because depression, grief, is not a physical symptom. It's not a condition that is made physically. Because if I cut my brain open today, I'm not going to find depression. I will find the, the side effects of what it causes. So my research was into how do we change this experience? How do we combat depression? Because if I'm taking an SSRI or an, or an antidepressant, it's not going to do, do me any good because like Lexapro changes the architecture of the brain within three hours. I've spent over 20 years of research into well, how do I change my own life. So what I found is by utilizing scalar frequencies and not machine generated by using natural energies, we can actually change our entire lifestyle, our entire bodies, our entire energies. If you research into a guy by the name of Tom Palladino, he has found that by using scalar frequencies we can change He's able to uh, cure diseases and all sorts of stuff. What we have been doing is, I have a marriage therapist in the US who is using this music to uh, work with emotions for their clients to change the dynamics within the relationships. We had an experience where a person came to me going, my friend has um, pancreatic cancer, it's 1.9 uh, centimeters in growth, they've asked me a question, whether I can do something. I said, right, let's explore and experiment. A few months ago, I get an email saying this reduced to 1.5 centimeters as a result of uh, listening to it, yet life-saving surgery. I still don't understand how this works. Um, what I have also realized is that people's lives are changing, and we have practitioners now that are using this music in their work in holistic therapy and in mainstream therapy. Um, the greatest advantage is it's a complementary therapy that complements already existing complementary therapies. And in my booth at P1, we have two different types of healers that are working with this music in their own way. And it's bringing major changes and major clearings and all sorts of stuff. It's very revolutionary because it's the first time here. Um, and I'd love to talk to you more. I'm actually having a group session which is even more interesting and different because we're using a whole series of different consciousness. We're working with, you can say, the Archangel realm, the Ascendant Master realm. We're working with everything all in one go, all at one time. So definitely keep up with your fluids today because this is, my, my, my throat is already dry and I've only been doing this for six minutes. So my name is Stephen North. I, I'm happy to talk to you later more at, down at P1. Don't know why I'm nervous, sorry. And have a great day. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Stephen North. Thank you so much, Stephen.